When we want to export a mix from Pro Tools, we must first have a master fader so that we can see and set up our mix levels. Remember, we're aiming to have our highest peak within the top 5 dB of the dynamic range. The Pro Tools channel faders feeding the master fader can be used to get the levels set appropriately, but the master fader itself can also be used to add or subtract level or gain to the mix. The levels visible on the master fader meters represent the final levels leaving Pro Tools on those outputs. After setting our levels at the mix fader, there's one final thing we need to do to prepare for the mix down bounce. We need to top and tail our mix to ensure that the mix begins and ends with silence. If we don't follow this step, then we can find that our mix file has an abrupt beginning and end as our sound file player transitions to and from the track. If we look at the master fader in the mix window, the default view is the volume automation view. To top and tail this, we need to simply find the beginning and end of the track and ramp this volume up at the beginning of the track and then down at the end of the track. The exact speed of the ramp at the end of the track depends on how the track ends. If the track fades out, then this ramp may need to be slower than if it ends suddenly. You'll hear the volume automation when you write it, so let your ears be the judge. To hand draw the volume automation, we just select the grabber tool and move it down to the automation line where it will turn into a finger pointer. Clicking anywhere on the line will create breakpoints which we can then click and drag around. If you need to delete a breakpoint, just hold down Option and click on the breakpoint to delete it. I'll create enough breakpoints to create a fade in and out at the song beginning and end. The point that I ramp up to when the song starts should be appropriate for the global mix levels that we set previously. If we set our mix levels with the master fader at 0 dB, then this should be 0 dB. If, on the other hand, we adjusted it globally via the mix fader to some other value, then it needs to ramp up to that value. Once we've created our ramp in and out, we're then ready to bounce. To bounce, we must first create a selection in the timeline with the selector tool which indicates the exact part of the timeline that we want to bounce. This is very important. By default, Pro Tools will bounce from the very beginning of the timeline and songs rarely start there. They usually start a few bars in, like this one does. When selecting the area to bounce, select at a point a fraction before and after your first and last breakpoints. Get this selection as close as you can to the breakpoint on either end of the track. Without clearing the selection, go to the File menu and select Bounce to Disk. It's very important that you do not select Bounce to QuickTime or you'll create a movie file instead of an audio file. This brings up a dialog box. The bounce source needs to be set to whatever your mix outputs are. In my example, these are labelled Main Outputs 1 and 2. On your systems, they might be called Outputs 1 and 2. If in doubt, you can also choose a physical pair of outputs as the bounce source. We then set the output type and resolution. File type should be set to WAV. File format should be interleaved. Bit depth should be 24-bit and sample rate should be 48 kHz. We then need to give the file a name. Label it clearly as a mix file. After that, we need to choose the location that the mix file will be saved to. By default, Pro Tools stores bounced files in the Bounced Files folder within the relevant session folder. You can leave it set like that. Then, check the offline box if you want to bounce in faster than real time without listening to it go through in real time. Click Bounce. When finished, you should be able to open your Bounced Files folder and the mix file will be in there. You can then open it in a file player like iTunes to listen back and check that the bounce worked as expected. It's important to check your stereo mix file after you've made it. So this is now your stereo mix file.